वो बाइक्स पे भागते हैं हम उन्हें बाइक्स पे पकड़ेंगे When the Bollywood movie Dhoom released in 2004 I was in 4th grade but I remember myself waiting eagerly for it after which I finally decided to borrow 20 rupees from my dad and rent a DVD of Dhoom why was I drawn to it so much not because of the actors the movie the songs heck I didn't even care what the story was okay the only reason for me to hunt for that movie was the super bikes the vroom vroom of the engines and the speed and adrenaline Those people on those bikes seemed invincible and could do absolutely anything. And yet, I was naive enough to believe all of it. I was always fond of bikes, but this thing hooked me. I wanted to experience that adrenaline, that power, that feeling of a superhero with the bike. And I'm sure whoever is watching this video right now shares the same dream as me to own a super bike, to feel that power. Indian market has gotten really competitive with quarter liter class bikes that deliver great power with sufficient features. You surely do get enough power to get by through the city and the highways. But there's something else about super bikes that is just so aspirational. But with middle class guys, we have a lot more important things to think about than a hobby worth lack. Not only does it seem extravagant, but it also doesn't make sense to buy a bike that costs more than a car. Some of us struggle to buy the normal bike of our dreams, let alone a super bike. The dream just feels impossible to materialize. But dil to bachcha hai ji. What do you do to this stubborn dream? When a middle class guy like me thinks of a brand like Triumph, the first thing that comes to mind is that they're way out of my league. Although when I come across their new offering the Triumph Trident, the far-fetched, blurry, desaturated dream of owning a super bike gets a little bit vivid. A 660 cc triple cylinder engine that generates 81 PS of power. That's more power and displacement than all the bikes I have owned combined. For an amateur rider like me, this is the first stepping stone into the world of dedicated super sport biking. This is the exact same thing I said to myself before I hopped on the bike, followed by the surge of anticipation or rather anxiety of riding a powerful middleweight machine. Things can go wrong. What if I lose control? What if I can't comprehend the power? To my surprise, as soon as I started riding, the Trident felt a lot more friendlier than I imagined. Firstly, thanks to its modest build and super impressive weight distribution, I was actually taken aback to find this bike lighter than my own Royal Enfield. It was easier to handle and maneuver around and did not take me more than an hour to get completely comfortable with the ergonomics and the riding position. And as soon as I got comfortable with the bike, there was just one thing to do. The 81 PS of power is more than enough to get you wide awake and give you that adrenaline rush you've been craving for. While being super exciting and thrilling to ride, the Trident isn't intimidating in terms of power either. You get plenty of low end torque and hence you don't have to keep juggling between gears. Now it's time for the traffic review of the Trident. The good thing I like about Trident is that it has got really good low end torque. You don't really have to keep messing with the gears every now and then since there is a very good low end torque even at second gear I can easily move at the speed. Look at this. And it's effortless. It doesn't even take anything to try. There's no knocking, there's no nothing. There's no jerking at all. It easily goes on at the speed even on the second gear. And that's almost as good as a Royal Enfield. And Royal Enfields are really famous for their torque. So that's really great on Trident's part. And at the same time, even after having really good low end torque, this thing picks up really really well. On second gear, it can do 15 kilometers per hour. Heck, not even 15. It can do 10 kilometers per hour, as well as it can do 90 kilometers per hour effortlessly. Of course, you get a slight bit of vibrations at the top, at the very top, like at the very end of the rev band. But that's really manageable, and that's super exciting because the performance you get on offer is just fantabulous, man. And while you climb up the rev band, there's a good and linear surge of power. And post 6,000 RPM is where the Trident gets exciting.
in no time man in no time god damn it <laughs> Woo -hoo! holy sh that's some insane level of acceleration man and this is in train mode dude god damn it i'm sorry if the mic popped and cracked but i had to yell man there's no other option for me to just you know comprehend with all of that power between my legs <laughs> Ooh, that was that was crazy man that was really crazy there's that slight kick in the pants feel for the new riders but it's not at all intimidating the best part about this engine is that in spite of it making so much power the way it is delivered makes the trident predictable and hence easier to ride for new riders also thanks to the tubular steel chassis and slightly sporty ergonomics you have a good hold of the bike and that's confidence inspiring as well. Speaking of confidence, for you to be confident to ride at higher speeds, you need to be confident to drop the anchor whenever the time comes. If you can't control the speeds you're riding at, you are literally riding towards heaven or hell. Depends on how you live your life. But anyway, Trident gets twin floating discs with dual piston calipers at the front and a single disc at the rear, both by Nissan. Like most of you, this is the first time I rode a bike with dual discs at the front. And boy oh boy did I notice the difference. These have to be the best brakes I've ever used on a bike, hands down. So no matter how intimidated you are by looking at the numbers, the friendly nature of Trident makes you feel like a pro within just one day of riding. But please don't let that deceive you, because what's making you feel like a pro is the tech that assists you and in a way corrects your mistakes while riding. Trident of course gets dual channel ABS as standard. Besides that you also get traction control. Traction control is quite crucial in times like these where there are wet roads. So the traction control actually helps and stops the wheel from spinning in, term, in, in cases of immediate throttle. So how that works is like this. You see that? That TC flashing on the speedometer. When you immediately open throttle the wheel of course will spin because of the power and the tires can't comprehend that power and they spin then and there so to kind of prevent that the traction control limits the power of the engine so that it stops the wheel from spinning it's as simple as that so this is how it works see tc flashing on the speedometer that's what traction control is and that's quite handy in situations like these what i've noticed is the traction control is quite intrusive but at the same time pretty seamless i have seen the tc light blink a lot many times on the speedo but never would have noticed it if there were no light to indicate in the first place it is that negligible and maybe if i ring the throttle completely on a wet surface that's when i might notice the power getting cut off which i'm obviously not willing to test out so i'll just believe the speedo indication besides that you also get bi-directional quick shifter as an option that comes at about thirty thousand rupees extra now, why would you buy an accessory that costs 30,000 rupees extra? I thought of that too. But after riding this bike, I did notice that while hyper riding, so to speak, the surge of power and speed you get is so much that sometimes it is difficult to comprehend and shift at the correct time. I have never missed my shifts on the smaller capacity bikes, but I found myself quite clumsy with the gear shifts at higher speeds. And honestly, a quick shifter would have really come handy at that time. Don't get me wrong, the 6-speed gearbox with slipper clutch on this one is super slick. But at higher speeds, when you're pulling away and things are coming at you like meteors, you need to have the muscle memory of shifting gears at the correct moment before you hit the rev limiter. And I'm a sucker for seamless and precise gear shifts. And looking at myself not being able to do it at higher speeds was kinda disappointing. Although it's just a matter of time until I get used to the power and speed. Maybe Triumph can give me the Trident for a year and I'll show you guys how butter smooth my upshifts and downshifts get. Are you listening Triumph? But anyway, besides that you get two riding modes, the rain and road, that are configured to wet and dry surfaces which is actually quite crucial on slippery Indian roads given the amount of power and torque this bad boy produces. I couldn't really identify the difference between the road and the rain mode uh, to be honest but uh, yeah, the rain mode was slightly, very slightly muted in terms of power than the road mode. So that's basically maybe for, I don't know, beginners who are just hopping onto the bike for the first time, maybe like me, who don't really have an idea of the amount of power this bike has, 81 horses. So you don't really get all of those 81 horses in, in rain mode. But road mode gives all of that to you. Of course, this bike is a really really spoiled child it looks very very innocent <laughs> but it has got many naughty, naughty things to do under the carpet and once you open the throttle 
the naughtier side just comes up and says hi here i am those were the riding aids that help you get used to and control the trident 660 besides that you also get some interesting features that make your ride even more convenient firstly you get the beautifully retro styled instrument cluster that's a combination of reverse lcd and color tft screens that display loads of data that is very easy to read and navigate the speedometer is quite elaborate it has got a speedometer the odometer it's got the fuel gauge this is the engine temperature uh, you can get the fuel status you can get the trip meter then the gear position indicator, brightness settings. Then of course you've got the rain mode, the road mode, and you've got a Kawasaki over there. <laughs> this is the engine temperature, which I like to keep in traffic so that I get to keep a check on the engine. And I've also gotten a temperature coolant high warning when a while I was in the traffic. So that's also quite scary, to be honest. But that's a really normal deal for a bike of this capacity of the engine. So, and you'll have to deal with it because our weathers are not really good for engines such big. These are of course the hazard lights and uh, this is the kill switch. And the start button is of course integrated in the kill switch so there's that. There are some fancy bells and whistles as well. You of course get all LED lighting even on the turn indicators that are by the way self cancelling. I have no idea how that works on a bike but that's super cool. You can also opt for Bluetooth connectivity which comes as an accessory that lets you connect your phone, use your turn button navigation, music controls and lets you control your GoPro. So that's quite slick as well. And me coming from a Royal Enfield, anything that is more than a fuel gauge is icing on the cake. And the icing on this cake is larger than the cake itself. And speaking of Royal Enfield, let's address the elephant in the room. The build quality and fit finish of the Trident 660. You ogle at the Trident from any angle and all you'll find is shiny gold standards in terms of quality. Oh my god, everything is built with such attention to detail as if the engineer sculpted each part, sang it a lullaby and put it to sleep on the Trident 660. The switch gear, the body paint, instrument cluster, even the engine internals look so promising that I have caught myself staring at it for hours. I mean take a look at this tail section. Have you seen a more neatly designed tail on a bike ever? It just looks so perfect. But at the same time, if you zoom out a little bit, everything looks so simple and for the lack of a better word, minimal. Triumph has taken a different approach this time with the styling of the Trident. And this can be a hit or miss for people looking to buy their first superbike. I mean, I love the way the Trident looks with its modern retro styling. But there's nothing striking about the design that would make you stand out in the crowd. You wouldn't grab as many eyeballs in the traffic as you would from a bike from another brand with a similar spec. But it's good in a way that it grabs less attention and as a result is less prone to unwanted hands wanting to touch and mess with the bike whenever you're not around it. Also, the modest design and simple styling is less intimidating and that again is a plus for immature introverts like me that don't like people staring all the time. Also, just like the styling, the ergonomics are simple, minimal and comfortable. The frame is narrow and you sit quite low in the saddle at 805mm of seat height with perfectly positioned footbacks. Which means that longer rides won't be an issue on the Trident, right? I would have said yes, but the Trident's suspension doesn't let me conclude that. Let me clarify. The suspension is surely harder than one would want on Indian roads, but it compensates with amazing control on highways at higher speeds. Alright, let's do the off-road test. The classic Indian off-road test of the Triumph Trident 660. It's not that this, this uh, road is bad, it's not that this road is just how it is right now. This road is actually good all the time. It's just that I've made it, I've designed it in a way so that, so that I get to test the Trident 660. You know, for review purposes, we are a very big budget channel. So we get the roads done in a certain way for us to test our bikes. You know, we are a multinational channel, MNC. <laughs> the suspension is quite hard to be honest. And you feel each and every bump, you can literally understand it through the vibration of my voice right now but the thing is that the suspension is quite sophisticated okay now uh, i'll explain what exactly does that mean <laughs> the thing is that when you're at higher speeds and this actually happens with all the bikes that do higher speeds generally it's that they've got a little tighter and a little harder suspension what that does is at higher speeds the bike doesn't just move all around because of the bounciness of the suspension and that's actually ideal for speeds at above about 80 or 90 or 100 and and so on so that's actually helpful at higher speeds but the 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 drawback is that 
it compromises with your ride quality now you can't really expect a royal enfield level of ride quality from you know a sporty bike like this otherwise on highways it will be all over the place and this actually i've also checked it on at higher speeds and the suspension is like beautiful it irons out almost all the bumps on the road once once you are at higher speeds so that's my observation i don't really know if this makes sense but that's actually my observation with the suspension uh, speaking of spec of course you get the showa upside down forks at the front and a monoshock adjustable suspension at the rear these are technical terms and i won't really go into that because i don't really care about it much and a lay person won't really care about it it's just that these specs are really relevant if you are a fan of this bike or if you are looking forward to get a super bike of course the suspension is adjustable uh, for preload so that's there and that's a good thing but yeah that's the scene with the suspension it's not really the best uh in terms of slow speeds and bad roads but it is manageable as well the the, it, the thing is that it doesn't feel fragile so you are really confident you are also pretty sitting tight on the bike so you don't really feel like it's going to give up or something so that brings us back to the question does a low life like me deserve good roads in this country not really i'm not worth it maybe if i pay my whole salary to the government and keep just the taxes to myself then maybe we can think of a possibility of good roads until then let's just search for a spine insurance shall we do we get it by the way bakwas ki bhi had hoti hai but on the brighter side the joy of finally getting good rideable roads after a miserable patch of potholes where you can pull away with all of those 81 horses and the song the trident sings with its three cylinder vocal cords is symphony to ears and the soul the exhaust note makes up for everything missing in your life and can grow into an addiction trust me i've experienced that but when you're in nirvana with the winds gushing onto your face the sweet melody of the underbelly exhaust singing into your ears you are slapped with a surprise speed breaker and you hit the same underbelly exhaust on it to crush your heart into tiny pieces of misery well done the ground clearance on the trident is sufficient if you have the rear monoshock set at its hardest setting if it's not and to top that if you have a pillion with you there's no other way than going over deep potholes and taller speed breakers without hitting the underbelly on the ground i have gone over speed bumps at 2 km per hour and still hit the ground it is really painful trust me the trident suspension and ground clearance is clearly not made for indian roads but if you somehow find a way around it quite literally that is you don't have to worry about anything on this bad boy the trident is like that naughty kid in school that looks super cute adorable and harmless but once you let it go it is one hell of a trouble maker and with the price tag of 695000 x showroom this one with all that it has to offer is surely a steal of a deal from a premium brand like triumph also surprisingly the service intervals for the trident is at 16000 km or once a year that might roughly cost you about 9 to 10000 rupees which is honestly really affordable for a bike of this spec this brings us to the conclusion Does the Trident live up to my dream of owning a super bike and living the Thum life? It surely does. I would rather buy a middleweight 660 cc bike that has usable power and have fun on it than buying a liter class bike and paying triple the price and not even using 2% of its capabilities. The Trident surely makes sense. What do you think about the Trident 660 and how did you find my thoughts and review? Let's hang out in the comment section and stay tuned for my ride blog coming up with the Trident 660. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bonus. नाही नाही. असं मी येणार. तू समोरून ये समोरून त्या गाडीच्या समोरून ये. Oh man, 5 minutes into the recording and my my phone is burning hot right now. असं मी सोडून येणार आणि जर मी जात असणार तेवढ्यात तू घेऊन जा म्हणजे फोर्सने घेऊन जा रे क्यू धूप मे तुमको काही करणार यार गाडी सिकणी चेंज द फ्रेमिंग ऑफ दिस सो जस्ट लिव्ह इट दॅट वे आणि तू माझ्या पाठवूनच आहे कारण मी पुढे असलं पाहिजे Go now, go! Leave, God damn it. Do I just stare at them and wait for them to leave out of guilt? <laughs> please guys, please. Why can't I just peacefully record? Yep.
Yep, I'm just gonna stare at you till you leave. <laughs> Mission fucking accomplished, man. <laughs> woo hoo hoo hoo. Ah, that was that was good. That was good performance on my part. Just give that death stare into their eyes and yeah, you've you've, you've made it, man. You've made it. That was insane level of performance. Okay, what's next? Just stare. Stare at them to death. Keep staring. Yes, I did so. I did so. <laughs> mileage to yaar ye 30 nahi 30 tak deti hai mm. okay there was a kind gentleman so i can't really stare at them to leave why do people why are people kind man why can't even be mean to them right all you want dude can't do anything to you he just killed me with kindness god damn it nahi tu kaise gaun ja maite asa gaun ta tu maza haath khechun gaun ta guess i've got no option then to just Wait. What else? All right, I lost to these guys, man. I'm just gonna do with whatever I've shot. It's been what more than 30 minutes. I'm waiting for these guys to get done, but this doesn't seem to be affecting them, affecting them in any way. So I just let them be, man. I don't own this place to, you know, be entitled to it. I lose, you win. So please, sab sab kar sara kabar sab kar karai sara.